Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, y'all are having a wonderful day today. So, I thought that I would talk about this conversation. It was not too long ago when I had a conversation about who is the greater quarterback between Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. And in my opinion, there really is no discussion about that. There also is no discussion about who is greater between Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. But a certain amount of people, just like they've guessed with Aaron Rodgers for the past, I don't know how many years, they assume that once Aaron Rodgers won his first Super Bowl, that he was so phenomenal in some of his seasons that he eventually would lead his team to another one. And a lot of people overall predicted the same thing with Patrick Mahomes. Now, the difference between a Patrick Mahomes and a Russell Wilson and an Aaron Rodgers and a Drew Brees is that even though all those players are greatly impactful or very, you know, uh, very, very impactful when it comes down to it, Patrick Mahomes, in terms of his peak, is actually more impactful than all those players because he does not need a top five offense and defense in order to even make the Super Bowl like those other players do. So it is what it is because you notice about Patrick Mahomes, he does have a top five offense, but when it comes down to it, he does not need a top five defense in order to make the Super Bowl. So it is what it is. All right. And let's keep in mind, you know, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, and Drew Brees, they've all lost certain games. Uh, where they probably should not have lost. So it is what it is, right? but it's whatever. But anyways, when it comes down to it, there's been a lot of hype behind Patrick Mahomes, and some would deserve to think so, but there's been a conversation about could Patrick Mahomes eventually become the greatest quarterback of all time? And after this recent Super Bowl win that Tom Brady had, adding on to his rings, also winning with the second franchise, and beating Patrick Mahomes in a head-to-head -head matchup, will Patrick Mahomes now ever have a chance to surpass Tom Brady as the greatest quarterback of all time? And that is the question. So let's see what they have to say. It's unlikely that he will catch Tom Brady because it's like as though LeBron lost that series in Dallas to Michael Jordan. Then how would, like, you know, but if LeBron rematched Jordan and beat Max, him, he and, LeBron, him. and LeBron Dude, went I... on to win five or six championships, he would have a generation of people saying he's better than Jordan. It's not happening. And I get... Um... I understand where Max is coming from. If Patrick Mahomes overall were able to rematch Tom Brady and were able to beat him, I mean that that would <laughs> that would sort of um, you know help his case. But you know this kind of reminds me, and I just talked about this recently, and this was on ESPN first take recently as well. I just watched this you know uh, take when it came to a fight between Manny Pacquiao and Terrence Crawford. A possible fight between Manny Pacquiao and Terrence Crawford. And I'm a boxing guy, so I always give a lot of boxing analogies. But a lot of people overall, you know, when you take a look at that fight, it may impact Manny Pacquiao's legacy a little bit if he loses that fight. But he's 42 years old. <laughs> if he loses that fight, he's going to basically have that excuse. And Manny Pacquiao is pretty much in that... I'm not going to say that he is the greatest of all time. I don't really know who I rank as my greatest of all time. You have a few in that argument. But there are a lot of people that would rank him there because of his accomplishments. There is no other eight-division champion ever in boxing history. My point being is this. Wherever you rank Manny Pacquiao, in my opinion, he would at least be a top 20 boxer of all time. Probably top 10 for me. But when it comes down to it, Manny Pacquiao is one of the all-time greats. In Tom Brady's case, he pretty much for sure is the greatest football quarterback of all time. Now, he, in my opinion, is probably the greatest football player ever in the NFL's history. So it is what it is, or the greatest, you know, NFL player in its history. But it is what it is. And now with him winning a head-to-head -head matchup uh, in that, you know, first time, and also uh, the absolute first time that they faced off in the playoffs, which was a few years ago in the AFC Championship, what people are going to look at is that when Tom Brady was pretty much at his best or at a very good point in his career, he was 2-0 versus Patrick Mahomes, and he beaten, beat him in a head-to-head -head game in the Super Bowl. I'm telling you what, if Peyton Manning was able to beat Tom Brady instead of beating him in the AFC playoffs, if he was able to beat him in the Super Bowl, you know, let's say Peyton Manning would have been in the NFC and he would have met Tom Brady in the Super Bowl and beat him a few times, and let's say Peyton Manning, instead of having, you know, say, uh, two rings would say have four or five, and Tom Brady, let's say, somehow still had seven, there would be a lot of people debating that Peyton Manning is actually the greatest quarterback of all time especially with his statistics and a certain amount of other things and his five regular season MVPs and a certain amount of other things. But you can't argue that Peyton Manning is greater than Tom Brady because he does not have nearly as good of a playoff record as Tom Brady. And on top of that, when it comes down to it, 
even though he beat Tom Brady in a certain head-to-head matchups or in certain head-to-head matchups, he does just not have really anything that Tom Brady has. He beats him in MVPs and first-team All-Pros, but really everything after that, Tom Brady pretty much kills him in. So it is what it is. But when it comes down to it overall, and maybe some statistics Peyton Manning has, but it is what it is. Anyways, when it comes down to it, uh, you know, when I take a look at Patrick Mahomes, it's going to be very difficult for Patrick Mahomes to get that monkey off his back because Tom Brady was just able to beat him in a head-to-head matchup, you know. And let me also state this, and I get with the Kobe, excuse me, not Kobe, the LeBron James versus Michael Jordan comparison comes in because a lot of the millennials, especially who grew up watching LeBron James, which is really during my time, uh, you know, they grew up watching LeBron James. They love to argue that Michael Jordan is not as great as LeBron James or that LeBron James is greater than Michael Jordan, you know, when it comes down to it. In my opinion, Michael Jordan is a greater player. And I really don't think that there's a shadow of a doubt about that, but it is what it is. But when it comes down to it, uh, if LeBron James were somehow able to beat Michael Jordan in a head-to-head matchup, if they were to play him in the same era, there certainly would be more of an argument for LeBron James, or you'd have a lot more people convinced. It's kind of the same thing also with Kobe Bryant and LeBron James. In my opinion, LeBron James is a greater player than Kobe Bryant. But if Kobe Bryant, if one of his five championships came against LeBron James in the finals, especially if it would have been one of those Miami Heat teams, there'd be a certain amount of more people claiming that Kobe Bryant is greater than LeBron James by a decent amount. You'd have a certain amount of people saying that, or that at least it would be farther apart than what some of those Kobe Bryant fans think it is now. Now, in my opinion, I believe LeBron James is greater than Kobe, but it is what it is. But I understand the comparison, and that also leads us to another point. Do I believe that the Kansas City Chiefs will beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a rematch? I personally don't think so. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers seem to have retained a certain amount of their players. They seem to be focused on winning and possibly becoming a dynasty. That defense looks absolutely stout. Their offense still looks pretty damn talented. Tom Brady doesn't really look like he's slowing down all that much. We'll see what happens. But to be honest with you, I really don't know who's going to be able to beat that team if they're at their best because that is probably one of the most talented teams that I've personally ever seen. Hey, let me throw a different kind of analogy there, Max. Um, in 2002, my man Will Packer, producer extraordinaire. I know, Will. Well, a huge, yeah. huge Tampa Bay fan of what. But even if, when it comes down to it, even if Tom Brady loses in the rematch, Tom Brady is going to be 43 years old. And I think actually he might be 43 this year. I can't remember. But he's going to be, you know, <laughs> damn near his mid 40s. Tom Brady can lose to Patrick Mahomes two times in a row. And when it comes down to it, he's not going to get uh, as much blame for the loss as he's going to get credit for the wins because he's in his 40s. It's going to be the same thing if Manny Pacquiao, uh, you know, faces Earl Spence or Terrence Crawford. That's why I use that analogy. You know, people are going to give Manny Pacquiao all the credit in the world if he wins over Terrence Crawford or Earl Spence Jr. But they're not going to give him a lot of the blame if he loses against one of those fighters because the man is 42 years old. <laughs> so it is what it is. That's just how things work. So, you know, Tom Brady has really secured a pretty damn strong grip on that greatest quarterback of all time position. And to be honest with you, probably the greatest football player of all time. Have you? He just texted me a few minutes ago. Here's the deal. When you look at what, what think about what Tampa did in 2002. They go out, they go all in. They go out and they get John Gruden. All right, that's one parallel. Mm-hmm. Then they go and they beat the Eagles. I was at that game, the, the coldest game I've ever been to. I had to cover that game for the Philadelphia Inquirer. I had, I looked like I was 300 Hope pounds. Hope you had a chinchilla. And the snorkels and everything that I had on, it was ridiculous, okay? All right, they finally beat the Eagles. They got over the hump. And more importantly, there were distractions along the way. If you recall, when they beat that one, that Super Bowl against the Raiders, Barrett Robbins, he sits up there, he's upset that the coach, Bill Callahan, you know, decided to, to game plan and go away from the power running game, which to him was his bread and butter. That's how he became a Pro Bowl center and what have you. He was distraught, depressed, leave the hotel, go out, get drunk, do drugs, prostitutes, all, all types of stuff. I mean, it was crazy what he did, and they couldn't find him. For the Super Bowl, okay? So the all-pro center was gone, all right? What happens this time around? Andy Reid with his son, that news comes up. That's percolating Super Bowl weeks. The parallels cannot be denied, but guess what we still remember? John Gruden had two winning seasons in his last six in his last six years in the six years in Tampa Bay, right? That was a Super Bowl championship season. Ever since then, they had no success. But John Gruden leaves, 
is in the Monday Night Football booth and is relevant to this day because of what they were able to do with that one Super Bowl. And that's a coach. So can you imagine what this is going to do for Tom Brady, who had six rings before he walked right. in my yesterday's point is, game? Hold on, hold on. And then to now do this? My I point mean, it's is, untouchable. My it's point untouchable. Is, my point is, you're right. That's why, in terms of it being unlikely, which is why I brought up... Well, the thing overall, and I agree somewhat with what Stephen A. Smith is saying... But when it comes down to it, it, it was special for a multitude of occasions, or a multitude of reasons, excuse me. Tom Brady, this was his second franchise. He was completely working under a different coach, even though he is a great coach, Bruce Arians. Uh, he was completely working under a different roster. He was going up against a fantastic offense and a fantastic team against the Kansas City Chiefs. The odds were definitely stacked against him this season, and he won again. <laughs> because a lot of the arguments that are usually made for Michael Jordan when it comes, uh, you know, with the LeBron James fans, they love to say that pretty much all of Michael Jordan's success was due to Phil Jackson. Well, they can't use that same argument or at least not completely with Tom Brady anymore because Tom Brady just went over under two separate coaches and two separate teams and two completely separate rosters. Babe Ruth, a hundred years later, people still think he's the greatest. Yeah. Probably was. Um, Sugar Ray Robinson, it's been 60, 70 years, he's still the greatest, and 60 or 70... I really don't, you know, and I'm a boxing guy myself, um, I really don't know who I would rank as the greatest. You know, that's, that's, uh, that, that's quite the conversation. Years from now, we may still be saying that about Brady, but I will remind you, LeBron James was out of the conversation permanently after the loss in Dallas. And he got his way back in. Back. So, well, in my opinion, he's not in the GOAT conversation. And a certain amount of people may disagree with that. But if he were able to win a couple more, then I would put him right there. It depends. But he's going to have to win more than Michael Jordan, in my opinion, to surpass him. Or to be above a Kareem, something like that. Because uh, if he wins as many as Michael Jordan or Kareem, then I'd probably maybe put him over Kareem. Just because of, well, eh, if, I don't know. I don't know, because Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he's, uh, he's got a lot of accomplishments. So, it is what it is. But when it comes down to it, if LeBron James were able to win a couple more, he certainly would at least be in the conversation. The reason why I don't have him in the conversation right now is because he's just fallen way too many times in the big moments. So, if Mahomes winds up beating <laughs> Brady at some point he down right, the road Brady, and man. winds up with five Super Bowls right. or something why like why that, he'll why, be in the why, conversation. Why don't, why don't you just quit? Why don't you just quit first take right now? You've been raving about Jordan being the greatest, as have I. In other words, we don't Thank believe you. LeBron yeah, so that's why there. That point so why are you saying that? Yeah. We don't believe it? Because I'm addressing your point, your point, about what people will remember. I, I, I agree, and that's what Max Kellerman is bringing that up, and I don't think Stephen A. Smith and that other guy is getting it. Max Kellerman is bringing up what people will think. He's not necessarily bringing up overall what he exactly thinks. He's bringing up what history will remember. Uh, that That's what he's talking about. Uh, and yeah, maybe. But the problem is is that if Patrick Mahomes are able to beat Tom Brady, this is where I think Max Kellman is a bit off and he's not realizing this. If Patrick Mahomes were to beat Tom Brady in a rematch, Tom Brady's going to be 40-something years old. <laughs> so Tom Brady, especially after this win, he can pretty much lose whatever game that he wants. And when it comes down to it... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he pretty much is untouchable at this point in time. So it is what it is. You're saying it's disqualifying because he lost to him head-to-head -head and people will forget the details. But those same people have embraced LeBron, many of them. Most people... The I'm not going to say that it's impossible for him to surpass Brady, but if he wants to surpass Brady now, he's going to have to win at least seven Super Bowl championships or eight. And a certain amount of people are not going to agree with that. The fact that Tom Brady beat you in head-to-head -head matchups twice, and especially once in the big game in the Super Bowl, and when you were more experienced and favored to win that game, <laughs> is going to be very hard to get over that hump. Greatest to ever Most live. people who embrace LeBron weren't born Max. when Jordan was playing. He'll be in the conversation Max, as second to Brady, just like LeBron's in the conversation oh. as second to Michael Jordan. That's facts, Max. Well, I well, LeBron James is not even second, in my opinion. So... It is what it is. And will Patrick Mahomes become the second greatest quarterback of all time? Who knows? But I'm really going to have to see that because right now, uh, right now, in terms of his career, if he keeps going the way that he's going, uh, well, and what I mean by that is his statistics, 
he's probably going to be in the same class as Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, and Russell Wilson. Uh, you know, Dan Marino also and Steve Young. But when it comes down to it, uh, if he continues making Super Bowls, maybe wins, you know, a couple more or, you know, loses a couple more, he'll probably be in that same tier as John Elway. But we'll have to see what happens. I would say this. Jordan, if Mahomes' peak is considered higher than Brady's as an individual performer, he doesn't... I would agree need to catch him with numbers of Super Bowls so long as he's competitive there if he has a handful of Super Bowl wins and at some point he's going to have to beat Brady no. head to head yeah. the fact that his that makes sense Max but uh, I'm not sure uh, because you're going to have to win a lot of rings for that to happen you're going to have to win a lot of rings for that to happen uh, and the fact that Tom Brady has three MVPs the fact that he has a certain amount of those other things and seven Super Bowl rings I don't know. Uh, and Max, you know, Max Cummins said as long as he's competitive, to be honest with you, I think the way that people will think about it, I don't think they're going to put Patrick Mahomes over Tom Brady unless he wins eight Super Bowl rings, <laughs> to be honest with you. But it is what it is. Cheek will be perceived as higher, could push him over the top. No. No. No, this is. Why not? Th in football, in team sports, when it comes to all time greats, whether you like it or not, they are going to be measured at their quarterback position by how many Super Bowls they win. We talk about Aaron Rodgers all the time as one of the most talented ever, but one of the questions, if not the biggest question tied to him is, why has he only won one? No matter how... Well, uh, actually, that's been one of the questions that the realists have been asking uh, because of the majority of the media, and it seems like 90% of the world, really has not been asking that question about Aaron Rodgers. I've, I've been one of the only ones on YouTube, I believe, and my channel is not overly big, of course, but, you know, if you've seen my videos, you know that I question it. And I also had another question. If Aaron Rodgers is nearly as impactful as many people like to allege that he is, how come this is his first time within his, you know, over 10-year career making the NFC Championship with home field advantage? You know how many times Patrick Mahomes has already had home field advantage in the AFC Championship? I believe every single time that he's made the playoffs. So it is what it is. The talent or how remarkable his statistics have been. That will be the same. Terry Bradshaw for, has that, four Super Bowl appreciate... rings and a cannon for an arm. No one ever calls him the greatest of all time, and no one did back then either. Max. Well, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I, uh, I was not really around <laughs> during the 70s, so it is what it is. But you have a certain amount of people that might call Terry Bradshaw the greatest of all time, or not the greatest of all time, but at least the greatest of that era, in my opinion, it would be Roger Staubach. But here's the problem. Roger Staubach was so statistically better than Terry Bradshaw. That's the problem. Both Patrick Mahomes, and this this is also the problem because you can say the same thing with Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. Even if Peyton Manning had, say, four Super Bowls, Tom Brady still probably would be over him unless Peyton Manning were to beat him a couple of times head-to-head -head in the Super Bowl. But that never happened. So it is what it is. But when it comes down to it, both Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady are statistically great players. And this is what a certain amount of LeBron James fans and what a certain amount of those other fanboys just don't get. You know, they take a look at the small differences and they say, well, this guy averages more this and this guy averages more this just barely, so he must be the greater player. You also have to take a look at how they play. You also have to take a look at the system that they play in, the coach that they play under, blah, 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 and the era that they play in. So it is what it is. But when it comes down to it, uh, bottom line is this. When you have two great statistical players... And, you know, obviously they both are great statistical players. You know, okay, they, they have that advantage there. Who has the advantage in MVPs? Who has the advantage in Super Bowls? Who has the advantage in Super Bowl MVPs? Who has the advantage in all team pros? Who has the advantage in these certain categories? That's what then you got to start looking at. And Tom Brady most likely is going to have more, you know, than Patrick Mahomes in almost every way. Unless Patrick Mahomes can beat him in MVPs, Unless he can beat him in all pros, and then let's say he comes up with six Super Bowls, then you're going to have some people, or a decent amount of people, that say that Patrick Mahomes is the greatest of all time. Even if he ends up with, say, four Super Bowls, and let's say he ends up with more MVPs than Tom Brady. Let's say that he becomes a Peyton Manning, sort of, with the MVPs and all-team pros, except he wins, like, four or five Super Bowls. Then you're going to have a great argument that Patrick Mahomes is the greatest quarterback of all time, but I still rank him over Tom Brady. Probably not, but when it comes down to it, you know, you'd have a certain uh, amount of people that would argue that. So it is what it is. That's what he's going to have to do. But it's more than just the statistics. It's more also than just, you know, being somewhat competitive in the Super Bowls. 
Tom Brady is a greatly accomplished player. He's going to have to win more MVPs than him. He's going to have to get more all-team pros than him. He's going to have to get more Pro Bowl mentions than him. He's probably going to have to beat him in all of that. So we'll see what happens. The only reason is because Terry Bradshaw respectfully played over like 40 plus years ago, bud. Like a lot, a lot of people that talk about sports weren't. A <laughs> the only reason why they talk about it, because he played over 40 years ago, bud. <laughs> he, he talked to Max Kellerman like he was a six year old son or something like that. <laughs> Live then. But Johnny so, Unitas had that title older, for a long time. They were eight year olds. Max. He will not catch Tom. Tom has... We'll see. I'm not going to... I, You know, I never say never. I never say never. But I'm going to say that it's highly unlikely. Because Tom Brady has just accomplished way too damn much in his career. But we'll see what happens. Seven Super Bowls. He has to win six more to even get into the conversation. Unlikely. In an era where the salary cap is going to continue to be fought, no one is going to do what Tom did and take well, I mean, less. Tom might also Nobody's win another one. Nobody's going to do it the way that Tom did that. Tom Brady, you know, the way that he's going, uh, <laughs> Tom Brady might win nine Super Bowls when it comes down to it. So we'll see what happens. And there's no guarantee that Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are going to make more Super Bowls continuously. So we'll see what happens. I have no idea how they're going to react to that loss. So we'll see. But that's really better for this video. I just thought that I would comment on that, that it was interesting. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.